Hey, Dirt Farmer Jay here from DirtFarmerJay.com on this special edition of Maggie's Kitchen. Today, I'm gonna to show you a recipe from my college days where my friends from Thailand showed me how to make this great, very simple stir-fried dish. You're gonna love it, stay tuned. Hey, Dirt Farmer Jay here from DirtFarmerJay.com. Well, everybody knows that when you're in college, one of the cheapest things that you can buy to kind of keep you alive is Top Ramen. But my friends from Thailand took it to the next level and made this delectable dish that I've actually prepared many times over the years, and our family has loved it for many, many years. I'm gonna pass it on to you today. So it only takes a few ingredients. One is Top Ramen and the spice packet that's inside it if it's a key ingredient as well. Some sliced beef, and if you're a vegan uh, or a vegetarian, then you can use tofu or something else. But this is just the sliced beef. There's different brands that are like this. And then stalks of broccoli. Now, there's three of us today during this filming, so I'm gonna prepare a three portion meal. Fill up three one bowl, really nice portions. And to do that, you need one packet of ramen per person with the spice packet. Uh, you can do, I can make these two packets stretch just perfectly. And we're probably gonna use one or two of these stalks per person. So let's go ahead and get this prepped and get it ready to go. All right, so we just go ahead and slice up the meat into ribbons and then I cross cut it as well just so you've got small amounts. Let's set that aside and we'll move on to the broccoli. All right, well, let's go ahead and rinse the broccoli. All right, when it comes to utilizing this broccoli, many times we only use the florets up here on the top, not necessary in this dish. I go ahead and pull off the leaves and my friends, they really find that the main stalks are very attractive to use. So what we would always do is just cut off the end like this, I put that for the chickens, but then the rest of these, you kind of creep medallions out of, like this. And then go ahead and create nice little florets like this. And you just work through the broccoli on each of that, because all of that will stir fry beautifully and really add to the, the volume of the dish. So remember, you can use that stalk quite a bit. Don't waste those pieces. Those stir fry very nicely. So go ahead and work through processing until you end up with a really nice pile of florets. And here I kind of cut into the head here. We're just gonna we'll do a couple more. What you, I do is take the, the top ramen and I do that, just kind of break it up. Otherwise, you're gonna end up with some really big noodles in there. I just kind of crush it lightly. Don't pulverize it, just break it up. Okay, let's go ahead and move over to the stove. We're gonna turn up uh, olive oil in a wok till it's very hot. Uh, this is a fast fry. You wanna get these as tender, crisp, and brown and crispy on the edges as quickly as possible. Okay, so you wanna get this very hot. I've been preheating all this while we were uh, over processing everything. And you can see that we've got some heat in that just because of the way the oil flows. I like to use olive oil. If you wanna use an Asian oil, like a sesame seed oil or something like that, that's fine. So we're gonna go ahead and see what kind of sizzle we get. And there we go. So you got some really nice heat in that. And then I go ahead and just distribute the oil as quickly as possible. Flame is on high. All right, so let's just let that cook. And while that's cooking, let's go ahead and get our ramen noodles boiling in this water over here that we've had preheating.
the color is starting to change a little bit. You see that everything kind of brightens up. The color of this becomes more vibrant, uh, showing that the cooking is starting to happen. And notice if you look, uh, take a look right there, you want to get that to start to develop several places on this to get it to be uh, that flavor to develop. So let's go ahead and let that continue. Let it rest on the surface there and get more going. Meanwhile, we'll start to distribute these packets onto this to let it cook. So all I do now, if you're salt sensitive, these kind of packets are very salty. So um, you need to be careful of that. You can substitute some other things uh, to get flavor, uh, but or you can just use less packets. But what I'm going to do is go ahead and just tear it, open it up like this. And then you're just going to sprinkle it all over. Just get it to coat everything. Boy, the aroma is starting to develop. So I let it filter out like that so you don't end up with any clumps anywhere. And I'm actually going to just stick with two of the packets. I think we have enough there. I wish that video was scratch and sniff so you could smell this. And again, that's, this is the fun thing of cooking like this. And back in college, this was a hot plate or a single plate with all my Thai friends would put a wok like this and with just a few ingredients would drive the rest of the dormitory crazy with the smell of this wonderful dish being made but heavily vegetable based. All right, so there we go, we're to that. Now we're gonna go ahead and add the meat. All right, here we go. Just slide that in, stir it in, and let it heat through and through. It's a pre-cooked meat. And again, let's just let it rest, and what I mean by that is just put it in one position, let it cook for a little bit. And meanwhile, there we go, I'm kind of condensing it to keep it good surface area, but also the heat coming up through it to continue to cook. Meanwhile, I'm gonna strain this off and bring this back on this, okay? All right, so we've gone ahead and drained that off. We're just gonna let that rest for a few moments. Let's see how our main dish is doing right here. Ah, it's looking pretty. We're getting some nice color. The trick to this, so you don't end up with a soupy mess down here where there's a lot of moisture, is to do it hot and fast like this so that it purges off the moisture very quickly and you get that crunch. Also, draining this out. Now we have all this top ramen. We're simply gonna put it in there. And flip it around just to, to incorporate it all and to get it pretty much all the same. Dirt Farmer Maggie doesn't uh, like to eat a lot of carbs, so she'll tend to pick out more of the broccoli and you can vary the portions on this. If you think this is too much noodles, then do less noodles. But this is a very accepting dish of your own preferences of how to season it, how fast to cook it, how many noodles, more veggies, less. Yes, you can put onions in it as well, or garlic, or leeks, or anything like that that you would like. And now we're ready here. I'm gonna go ahead and shut it off. We're gonna let it rest. I'm gonna just bring it down again. Okay, let's, uh, let's put it in a bowl. All right, let's go ahead and serve this up.
And there's actually a little bit left over on these three bowls, something you should know, this refrigerates quite nicely and it does well the following day. We generally eat it within the following day as a snack or something very quick and just can be containerized. Well, one other thing I'll throw at you here, my friends from Thailand taught me a little phrase because I used to go and hang out with them a little bit as they would go to some of the larger universities and meet a larger community. And they gave me this phrase, which I think is, after all these years, potayamadai, which means I don't speak Thai, which really caused a lot of problems for the people that I said that to that were Thai. So anyway, that's a little bit of story in the past, a great dish that we think you're going to enjoy. If you've got something like this you'd like to share with your fellow viewers, feel free to do so in the comments below. Or if there's some permutations or changes or modifications you've done on this sort of dish, share it with us. If you found the video to be helpful, won't you like it? And better yet, subscribe to our channel. Make sure you visit our new website at dirtfarmerj.com and visit Maggie's Kitchen for great recipes as well as blogs, observation of life, and watch for our new merchandise line. Until the next time, this is Dirt Farmer Jay, somewhat standing in for Dirt Farmer Maggie. Best to you.